What's up, Moto Buddies? Mike here from Taco Moto Co. and Baja Taco Tours. I have a very brief video to give you. This is a pro tip, taco shop pro tip on your 20 plus EXC FE bikes. Any of the bikes, um, whether it's uh, XCFW or the FES, they're all the same. If your bike has three relays sitting on top of the, of the battery here, then this little pro tip will work for you. So I get questions often about what to do if you want to do a quick test of your fuel pump. Some guys will say my fan isn't working, and then some guys will have questions about lighting. And so these three relays right here are for those circuits. So the first one here, on on the this would be the left-hand side of the bike, and it's marked here, fuel relay. So they do tell you what that first one is, fuel relay, obviously, duh, that's the fuel pump relay and then this one here is lighting the middle one and then the far left here or i guess to be the right the opposite side would be the fan so you have fan lighting and fuel pump you can go ahead and mark those on your bike if you'd like to to remember what they are they only again they only tell you which one is uh, the fuel relay they don't tell you the other ones so how can you activate these relays and determine if those circuits are even working or not if you take the relays loose they have these little rubber holders here. The, the back of the relay's got this little rubber doodad and it slips over this little finger right here. If you take these relays and you turn them over and you look at the bottom side of them, what you'll see are two terminals that are parallel to each other across the top and then two that are vertical. So the two that are vertical are the output. These go to the circuits. The two that are across the top are the control. And um, on most of these, if not all of them, the hot side is over here on the left, and that's got battery voltage on it all the time. And then the ECU controls the functions over here on the left-hand side. So that is um, the breakout of these circuits. So you're going to activate. What you're going to do is you're going to ground out the ground side of the control side of each one of these relays. So if we take the fan, well, I can tell you right now the fan will not operate unless the bike is running. And so on that particular one, with the bike running, and notice here that I've got my little ground jumper. So I've got my lead connected to the negative side of the battery, and then this is connected to a little dental pick. And so if I touch that to the left, will be the right-hand side of that relay, nothing will happen. I don't have the bike running. The fan is not energized. Um, that circuit's not hot yet, so nothing happens there. But if I go over here to the lighting circuit and I touch it, you heard the relay activate and my lighting is on and it's off and now it's back on. So I can test my lighting without starting the bike or without worrying about that timeout. Now when you, you know, you turn off the bike and you'll have like a 10 second courtesy, uh, the, this relay is energized this is grounded by the ECU, and so that'll stay active for about 10 seconds, and you get a few seconds of lighting. But if you wanted to do something with your lighting, screw around with it, test something, check something out, and you did not want to run your bike for the entire time of doing that, you could just take the lighting circuit and then ground the control side. That's the coil side of that relay. This other side here on the left, that's the 12 volts, and that's constantly hot. Ground that out, and you have activated that. Now on the last one, which is the fuel pump relay, if I activate that, I will get one cycle of pump run. And so if you heard that, the pump ran for one cycle. It does not repeat itself until you cycle the ECU with a run cycle. So you'll you'll be able to activate that, and it'll, it'll trip the pump that one time. If I wanted to do it again, I'd have to do a key. Uh, let me just go ahead and do that. So, Okay, now if I do it again, and there it is. So if you wanted to do that multiple times, I don't know why you would, but each time it would require you hitting the key that would recycle the ECU, and then you could get a, another activation of that. But to just do it the one time, there you go. So now by doing that, you've proven whether or not the relay works. You've proven if the fuse is active, if the circuit is good, and you've proven that the harness and all the connectors are good and in fact the pump motor itself is getting its power and is running like it should so you've done 
a whole bunch of diagnostics by just grounding out that left side of the, or the right side of the relay to activate that, the fuel pump. Now, if you continue to have fuel issues, it's probably in the tank, it could be a split filter, it could be other components of the fuel system, but at least you've eliminated uh, whether it's a pump run issue. And we talked about the lighting here. And then the fan, when the bike is running, if you energize this, I'm sorry, if you ground that out, then you will activate the fan. And so you'll, you'll trip the fan. So there's a quick little hack of how to test and operate those three relays. Now, if you had, here's one other pro tip. Let's say, for example, your fuel pump relay was bad. You activated this and it does not work. What you can do is you can swap relays from another circuit. So your fan might be important. Uh, maybe it's in the daytime and your lighting is unimportant. So you could just swap out these two and get the rest of your trip done on the lighting relay over here in the fan position. And when you get home, you can replace that relay. And these relays um, are easy to replace. This particular one has been separated out from the body and how you, how you, I should show you that because these are kind of tricky. There is a little tab on each side. There's a little plastic finger. And what you do is you just want to get like a flat screwdriver underneath this little tang right here. And you can just bring that up. I typically don't have any problem with like really bowing it out a lot. See how I've sort of deflected that? I'll get in there and dig that thing out and get a big bow on it. Okay. And then once you've got that finger, that tab out of the way, then this will disconnect. But I found in practice that these are difficult to remove. And so I'll often take, um, if I'm out in the field, a Leatherman or a flat screwdriver or a knife or something, and I will stick it here and I will pry a little bit and a little bit until this thing disconnects. And if you wanted to replace just the relay itself, there's a second set of tabs <clears throat> up here on the top and you just release these guys up there, up there on the top, and then you can pull the relay itself out. And if you wanted to replace just the relay, these are Panasonic, super common relays, automotive type relays. These are single pull, single throw um, relays that you can order and get probably at, a, at an automotive shop. You would have to cross-reference this though and they'll be able to look it up with the model number that's on the on the relay if you were out and you needed to go to a car car parts store to get one of these you could source one you don't have to get that from ktm so there you go let us know in the comments if you have any questions about any of this or if you need help with your bike and as always go out and get some adventure